Canada is set to make its latest policy announcement at 9.45 a.m. Eastern this morning. As you can see, no change to the bank's benchmark lending rate is expected, but there will be keen interest, as always, in the bank's statement. Some bank watchers expect the BOC to signal that rate cuts are likely later this year. The fixed income market, meanwhile, currently sees a 79% chance of a rate cut on June the 5th, and if no cut comes on that day, believes a cut on July 24th is a lock. There will be lots to digest today. The bank will also release its monetary policy report, a lengthy analysis of the state of the Canadian economy, and will hold a news conference at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. BNM Bloomberg will provide complete coverage of the day's events, of course. In the meantime, let's go to our featured guest of the morning. He's Alan Small, Senior Investment Advisor at Alan Small Financial Group, IA Private Wealth. Alan, first of all, welcome to the show, as always. Thanks for having me. What do you think the bank will do? There are increasing uh, forecasts from economists that we're going to see a dovish tilt in the, in the language, that, that paragraph in the statement that uh, tends to serve as forward-looking guidance. Yeah, I think everyone is expecting more of a dovish tone, obviously. We've seen, uh, obviously, the last jobs report was was not a good one uh, at the same time uh, GDP actually is picking up a little bit the first couple of months and so I think there's a bit of a I guess a push and pull you know I think the, the Bank of Canada can afford to perhaps wait a little longer because of the, the GDP growth for the first couple of months of the year but at the same time we're seeing inflation coming down 2.8 percent jobs uh, for the month for the most recent number uh, for the recent month was uh, obviously there were no jobs growth so I think there's a, a bit of a, a push and pull and I think that the Bank of Canada can still I think maintain their their uh, a bit more of a dovish tone but at the same time they can afford to wait a little longer so whether it's June whether it's July I don't think it really matters a whole lot at the end of the day I think Bank of Canada will move the question is will they go three times will they go twice maybe once uh, I think it's more of a, a two or three times for the year you and other Bank of Canada watchers some other Bank of Canada watchers believe the banks in a bit of a jam in terms of the housing market and what happens to the housing market uh, if and when rates go down and we remember that uh, not so long ago a, a, a decision by the bank simply not to raise rates uh, reignited activity in Canada's housing market the market housing market very very keyed up on what the Bank of Canada may do absolutely and uh, we know that there are a lot of people on the side sidelines with uh, just ready to jump into the market in fact we heard stories of people jumping into the market even before that first rate cut in anticipation of that first rate cut which we haven't seen as yet so I think there's a lot of money right on the sidelines ready to jump in and uh, I think that is a problem for the Fed right a problem sorry for the Bank of Canada you know we don't want to see pro housing prices continue to rise uh, they'd like to see a cool down there so a bit of a uh, issue there and uh, how they're going to navigate that they got to kind of walk that tightrope but overall I think the consensus is you know about a rate cut either June and July makes a lot of sense especially as we continue to see jobs slowing and inflation slowing. So you think a cut is coming by July at the latest? I think so right now yes. And you don't see, you would not see a cut in June and July which I don't think many people are calling for that. Yeah I think you could see you know I, I think at the start of the year perhaps the central banks cutting and then pausing and then cutting and then pausing kind of like every other meeting that's what we heard early in the year for the Bank of Canada and even for the Federal Reserve obviously that hasn't happened so I think they cut wait and see how it uh, affects the markets how things play out and we'll see when the next cut could be and that's the, the question about three cuts two cuts or maybe just the you know the one cut especially in the U.S., which is what they're which is starting to talk. Right. Let's talk a bit about the U.S. New inflation numbers are coming at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. 3.4% is the ex anticipated uh, annual pace of inflation growth in the U.S. during the month of uh, March. A number uh, out of sync with that number could shift uh, markets. Currently, uh, the fixed income market sees a uh, Fed rate cut coming on the final day of July. What do you think? Again, that's a tough one because we are seeing elevated inflation. Uh, the last uh, inflation numbers were, uh, they came in slightly below. The Fed looks at more of the core uh, inflation uh, data. Obviously, recently we've seen commodity prices tick higher, energy prices move higher. So I think the, the Fed's going to look at it on the core side more so, expecting just a slight uh, drop in, in core inflation. So uh, with that, I think once again, because of the economy being as strong as it is in the U.S., GDP growth 2.5%, 3% in that range for, for the first quarter of this year, again, they can afford to wait longer 
order to see more data, to receive more data before they start their cuts. And the question again, three cuts, two cuts, or maybe just one. A lot of Fed officials are now starting to say maybe they only see one or two cuts and maybe they won't happen until out of the fall. And I think they're pricing in almost a uh, guaranteed cut in December. But prior to that, uh, right now, you're looking at numbers that aren't as high as they once were with respect to rate cuts. That